fairy tale characters, advanced technology, and culture in all its myriad manifestations. A voyage of discovery through an enchanting land, led by Thor, the German god of thunder, alighting from the heavens to carry out his quest. Carnival Sunday in Rio de Janeiro, under the slogan Alemania Encantata, Magical Germany, Brazil's hippest samba school is snaking its way through the Sambodromo, turning Rio's famous carnival area into a riot of German culture. Beethoven's symphonies, the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales, the invention of the Zeppelin airship, and Black Forest Gateau. Perfect, they really show German culture in its best light. We like German beer and we're bringing the samba and the gaiety. German carnival, Brazilian carnival, it's the best in the world. The Unido Statashuka Samba School, which takes its name from its home district, is defending its title. They're vying against 11 other samba schools in the carnival competition. Paulo Bajos is the creative brain behind the display. He is the Carnivalesco, the school's celebrated carnival head. More than 70,000 people have turned up to watch his Germany parade. The procession through the Sambo Dromo is both the high point and the end of a long road. It all began with an idea from the Goethe Institute. In April 2012, Paolo Bajos and a team from the Unidos de Tajuca Samba School paid a visit to Germany. The first stop was the Rhine Valley, a river and region steeped in ancient German legend and folklore. The group is here at the invitation of the Goethe Institute's division in Rio. They came up with the idea as part of the Year of Germany celebration that's underway in Brazil. The Unidos de Tajuca Samba School was the winner of last year's Carnival Parade. They're intrigued by the idea and are here on a fact-finding mission. When we pay a visit like this, we get very deeply involved in the topic we're exploring. We already start creating designs in our heads. We absorb the atmosphere and the details and remember them. Then we transform that into art. In this case, the art of the carnival. A visit to the Carnival Museum in Cologne shows the visitors from Brazil how the Rhineland celebrates the carnival season. The tour of the floats brings with it a few surprises. In Germany, Carnival has a strong element of social criticism, a bit different than in Brazil. And the floats here are equipped for every eventuality. But not in every way. And we have toilets inside because it's so, such a long time, four hours, we are going for four hours. But the biggest difference is size. The Rio Carnival is much bigger. Our floats are up to 12 meters wide. Here, the streets are narrow, so the floats have to be narrow and smaller too, as they just explained to me. We don't have any of those limits. Next up, Berlin. The Brazilians have a week in Germany, a week to explore as much of the country, its culture and its people as possible. And all of that will serve as inspiration for Brazil's most popular street parade. Paulo Bajos has a special request. He wanted to pay a visit to an exhibition about European fashion through the centuries. 
He's seen photographs of the exhibition, and as the school's artistic director, he's keen to inspect the real thing. It's a great source of inspiration for their carnival costumes. Remember when we were looking at the catalogs to find these colors and we couldn't find them? We even had to paint tar on it to make it less shiny. The historical context will also be important when it comes to designing their own carnival costumes. Every detail counts. The sequins are very small, they're tiny. They're also getting a taste of high culture, a visit to the opera in Berlin. This year is the 200th anniversary of the birth of the composer Richard Wagner, and the Goethe Institute originally suggested Wagner's ring cycle as a theme for the carnival parade. That's why the group is attending a performance of Lohengrin. The set, costumes, lighting, it's all very dramatic. We'll have to do it a bit differently at the carnival, of course. Even if we do incorporate some elements, our carnival is a cheerful event, after all. Paulo Bajos agrees. Wagner is a bit too bombastic for a carnival parade. He's starting to come up with his own ideas that will be more appealing to a mass audience. Carnival in Brazil is a big business. As the floats grow ever more elaborate, the costs for material, technology and staff rise as well. The marketing team estimates the Sambo Droma parade will cost about 5 million euros. About half of that will come from admission tickets, broadcast rights and government funding. For the rest, the school needs sponsors, especially among German companies that do business in Brazil. Nearly 1,200 German companies have a subsidiary in Brazil. They've started the search already. There's no time to spare. We start researching the topic for the next year as soon as Carnival is over. We develop ideas, draw sketches and build models. All of that costs money, of course. And we also have fixed costs for materials. So, if the sponsors aren't in place, the entire project suffers. For the evening's entertainment, they pay a visit to a renowned Berlin dance hall for dinner accompanied by ballroom dancing. Back in Rio, the Harbor District is home to Samba City. In this huge complex, Rio's 12 best Samba schools each have a large building where they make everything they'll need for the carnival show. Unidos da Tijuca is here too. It's early November now, six months after the visit to Germany, almost 200 people are working full time preparing for the big parade. First up, some fairy wings. Some trees are also being brought to life, a tribute to the forests of the Teutonic legends and fairy tales. A VW Beetle is being carved out of styrofoam. Later, they'll cast a replica that will be painted and decorated. That same process will turn this frame into a beer wagon, complete with beer taps and barrels. The base of the float is a converted bus, topped now by a massive iron frame. Hercio Pime is a master of the craft. He's been building carnival floats for 30 years now. Pime is responsible for overseeing all six of the massive floats. One will depict the enchanted forest. The final result will be 20 meters long and 7 meters high. 
With the engine and all the mechanical parts, it will weigh 20 tons. This float will include the dwarves and all the other forest dwellers. It will hold about 100 people. And there are also four large sculptures that represent mythical creatures. This will be the nicest float of them all. Some 25 dwarfs will decorate the float, all cast out of fiberglass and painted by hand. Each float will be built according to a design that's been mapped out to the smallest detail. But even Pyme doesn't know every detail of the overall concept. The most inventive elements won't be unveiled until the big event. I build the floats. The creative director keeps some details a secret until the parade. The surprise is a major part of the effect. He knows it all. I just know 90%. Paulo Barros is currently the most successful carnavalesco in Brazil. He's already designed two winning Sambodrome performances for the school in the past years. A former flight attendant, Bajos is on a mission to put a lasting mark on the carnival. For the upcoming parade, he's abandoned the original Wagner suggestion in favor of a more general focus on German culture. Bajos is known for his ability to transform abstract themes into visual spectacles. A carnival parade isn't a book where you have to write down every detail. It's not a book. In a book, you have to explain everything perfectly. A Samba school's parade is art, a form of visual art. It should be a feast for the eyes. If we focus too much on the details and neglect the visual element, then we've missed the point. My main focus is what will delight the eye, what the audience will see. Bajos keeps close tabs on production. Right now, everything is running on schedule. His team is a mix of pros who work year-round and temporary staff who are here only for the high season. The carnival industry brings work to many people here in Rio. Bajos is making sure that the wood cladding for the floats will be finished next week. In another corner of the workshop, this year's most ornate and at 40 kilos heaviest costumes are being made. They'll be worn by the Bayanas, about 200 women who are the matrons of the Samba school. This year's outfit is inspired by the warlike maidens of Nordic mythology, the Valkyries, who also feature in Wagner's Ring Cycle Opera. The costumes draw upon various aspects of German culture. We've divided the theme of Germany into five main sections. The Valkyries belong to the first section, which is about mythology. Just like the dwarves. The second section is about the arts. The third section is the universe of children, which has toys and fairy tales. The fourth is about inventions. And the fifth is about black forest cake and pork. Caniero is a professional designer and also teaches at Rio's College of the Arts. But her main job is the carnival. It's where she can give her creativity free reign. She's designed more than 70 costumes for the upcoming show. Every detail has been carefully researched. One group of samba dancers will depict the legend of the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Where does the Pied Piper outfit come from? And from when? How do we adapt that to the carnival? 
We've shortened it a bit. In a samba costume, you want to show the midriff and legs. But the overall concept is still the mice, which follow the sound of the flute. And we have open sleeves, the way they did back then. The brocade for the Pied Piper costumes is being cut in another workshop. There will be 200 outfits, half of them for women, half for men. The rhinestones are glued on by hand, piece by piece. Ana Filipa Soromeño is also a samba dancer and will wear one of these costumes herself. It will be decorated with small pearls, rhinestones, little mice made out of rubber and ostrich feathers. I'm getting a chance to see the greatest show in the world from the inside. I love the carnival. And now I'm even working here. I get to see how it all grows. It's wonderful. One important member of the Samba School works as a taxi driver most of the year. Luis Calisto Montiero, who also goes by Casa Grande, heads the percussion group. Now, two months before the start of Carnival, he's got his hands full. Carnival is my passion. I earn a little bit of money from it, but it's not enough to earn a living. So I have to keep driving a taxi. The Borel Favela. Until recently, the slum was known as one of the most dangerous places in Rio. Today it's calmer here, but still poor. Many of the Unidos da Tijuca dancers are from Borel, including Casa Grande. He doesn't live in the favela any longer, but he's still a familiar figure here. Hey, you got a jersey for me? Yeah, but remind me later. I'll give it to Pedro. We're coming to the show on Saturday. I'll give you 50 jerseys to support you guys, okay? Back in his old neighborhood, Casa Grande is a welcome visitor, a man of influence and success. This was once Unido da Tijuca's old school building. They had rehearsals and shows in the hall, and it was also a meeting point for the neighborhood. The Tijuca school takes pride in its history. The Samba school was founded in the district almost 80 years ago. Every carnival song also pays tribute to the old district. Samba helped us make something out of our lives. I'm from the favela, just like the others here. We could have turned into drug dealers or addicts, but there are a lot of people in the favela who are hard workers. Samba helped me get out of Borel, and today I'm a role model for the people here. In late November, the school had its first rehearsal in the Sambodromo. There are about 300 members in the percussion group. Casa Grande gets them all in sync. Then the dancers join in. They're practicing this year's carnival song. A homage to Germany and to their samba school. Casa Grande's goal for tonight's rehearsal, coordinating the samba dancing with the singing and the rhythm. The percussion troupe has a very important role in the samba school. 
It leads the parade, and everyone dances and sings to their rhythm. The rhythm and beat are the heart of the parade. That's why the percussion troupe is also called the heart of the samba school. Ana Filipa Soromeño is also dancing tonight. She's part of the best samba troupe, made up of the dancers who live and breathe the samba beat. She had to audition to be part of the group. With only two months before the big day, rehearsals are mandatory. Assistants help everyone find their position and the beat. It's very important that all the dancers stick together in formation and that everything flows. We don't want it to just be a mishmash. We samba dancers tend to be a bit chaotic. We get so involved in what we're doing that we forget to concentrate. But we actually have rules we need to follow. At the actual competition, the school is allowed 82 minutes for the 700-meter parade through the stadium. Rio's carnival is not just a favela event any longer. Today, everyone wants to take part, even people who live in the elegant Copacabana district. Like Ana Filipa Soromeno. She moved here from Portugal a year ago to fulfill her dream of taking part in the world's largest samba show. She's been dancing since she was a child, and being accepted to a renowned samba school here in the home of samba is a great honor for her. As carnival season approaches, her schedule gets busier and busier. Almost every evening there's a rehearsal or a show. For me, samba is the best part of the carnival. I've always enjoyed dressing up, but I really love putting on these fancy show costumes and really getting all dolled up myself. It's Saturday, and for Unidos da Tijuca, that means it's showtime in the big hall. Several guests of honor in the audience tonight, including the German consul in Rio. And so is a man who runs the Brazilian subsidiary of a German company that produces medical supplies. Otto Philipp Braun. He's just agreed that his company will consider sponsoring the school at the parade, the first and only potential German sponsor thus far. The school still hasn't met its budget, and time is running out. Although it's not apparent at first glance, the marketing team is under serious pressure to find sponsors. Tonight's show isn't part of the Germany-themed parade, but it's an important advertising event for the school and a way to win over sponsors. Carnival is part of the Brazilian way of life, and using the Brazilian way of life to introduce people to German culture is an excellent idea. Back in the workshop just before Christmas. A group of children from the German school in Rio is here for a visit. All of the prototypes are done, and now it's full speed ahead with what will be 4,000 costumes in all. Snow White, the Frog King, Rapunzel. Here in Brazil, they often make us think of Walt Disney and the United States. But they're actually German fairy tales, as you probably know, from the Brothers Grimm. The work here is usually kept a secret, so the children here are a lucky few. This is the first car ever built in Brazil. It originally came from Germany. And then the director himself gives them a few exclusive details. 
The story behind our carnival parade is as follows. We go to Germany, and the Nordic god Thor introduces us to everyone. In the end, we have a big celebration, with a float we're building right now. It's dedicated to beer and everything that goes along with that. Chocolate is also an important part of his vision. The children are an enthusiastic audience, and they like the Germany theme. I like the costume with the chocolate. In the costumes, I saw that they were drawing on the grim fairy tales. That was great. The part with the chocolate was really cool. It's very German. Chocolate and beer, that's German. And sausages and pork. They looked at all the important themes, and that's what they used. Late January, two weeks before the carnival season. The press has to stay outside. The final preparations are a secret. But every evening there's a rehearsal in front of the big hall. All right, put it together. Tonight, it's the Black Forest Cake's turn. All right, first you need to straighten out and then move in. There's only one final rehearsal for the cakes left to come. The choreographer makes sure every move is perfect. The dancers are a specially chosen lot. You have to be tall enough for your head to stick out. We put on a red hat, and that's the cherry. You can't take it too seriously. It's all supposed to be fun. We have to transform ourselves into a cake, and it's a delicious process. A delicious treat for the culinary section of the Germany Parade. 80 pieces that will twirl their way into 10 Black Forest cakes in all. They're burning the midnight oil in the marketing department too. Thus far, they've only managed to collect about 300,000 euros from German sponsors, much less than they'd hoped. The marketing team says the German companies see Carnival as a big party. They don't appreciate the artistic skill or the effort and expense that's involved. Volkswagen is one of just a few last-minute sponsors. A video won them over. A group of dancers dressed as chauffeurs build several VW Beetles as they march in the parade a tribute to 60 years of VW production in Brazil. But most other German companies here are reluctant to come on board. We can't put on a small and shabby parade, something that's not exciting or innovative. To put on a grand show, we'll have to cut back here and there. But we're still going to carry a deficit into next year. E mesmo assim a gente ainda ficou com um déficit para o ano que vem. But most of the participants aren't aware of the problems behind the scenes. If the school wants to win the crown again, nothing should dampen the mood. Ten days before Carnival, the last public rehearsal in Central Rio turns into a big street celebration. Ana Felipe Soromeno is in her element right in the thick of things. Part of the German community in Rio is also turned out. Some will take part in the parade itself, and the German consul is here to do a bit of public relations work. There are no floats or costumes, but all 31 dance groups are here, showing what they're made of. A German tune to a Brazilian beat. Brazil and Germany together, so the lyrics. For an hour and a half, the song is an endless loop. 
All Tijuca fans are singing for Germany. We Brazilians will show what Germany has to offer. Tijuca will win. We'll win with Germany. The queen of the drummers is dancing at the front. Everything is going according to plan. It was a fantastic rehearsal. On Sunday, we'll have a sound test in the stadium. That way, we'll be sure to get the most points at the carnival parade. Sunday evening, just a week until the grand finale. The crowds have gathered in front of the Sambo Dromo in preparation for the last rehearsal. Even though there are no costumes or floats at the rehearsal, there is a feeling of celebration. The elite samba group is also getting ready. Their feet need a bit of care and attention, and they apply a sheen of glitter. Ana Felipe Soromeno is already thinking about what needs to happen this week. I won't get my costume until Tuesday. Then I'll have exactly five days to make sure it's all right, that nothing's torn and nothing falls off. That's what I'll be doing next week, making sure my costume is in order. The German participants are also ready. Some have taken part in other carnivals. Christoph Quade is actually from Cologne. He's been coming to Rio to take part in the Samba School's carnival parade for seven years now. Meanwhile, he's part of the main percussion troupe. As the only German percussionist, being here is a great honor. Tijuca's percussion troupe is special because they're very precise. They're seen as one of Rio's best percussion troops because they don't get faster or slower. They always keep the beat. All of the breaks and the groove are exactly as they should be. They're a very highly trained group. Tonight they're checking that the sound and lights are ready to go. The stands are nearly full. For the rehearsal, there's no admission fee. But there's no shortage of enthusiasm among the audience and the performers. The music's really loud and everyone's screaming. Yes, go for it, Tijuca. I'm totally beat. The stands were full and it looked just like the real thing. About halfway through I started thinking, oh God, when will this finally be over? But you also don't want it to end. Finally, the big event. It's 9 p.m. The parade is supposed to start at 11.15. Behind the scenes, 4,000 participants are donning their costumes. It's hot and sweaty work, but they're putting their heart and soul into it. Even though some aren't quite sure exactly what it is they're meant to represent, only a handful have ever even heard of Mephistopheles, the figure of the devil in Goethe's Faust, for example. I'm supposed to represent something to do with evil. Something that has to do with German history and with evil. Some kind of curse. My costume? What's our costume called again? Uh, we really don't know what it's called. <laughs> We're depicting Snow White the fairy tale. He's the prince and I'm Snow White. This costume pays tribute to the film Metropolis, the famous old movie. We're robots, and we'll put on a mechanical choreography during the parade. We're learning a lot of new things about Germany, all sorts of things we didn't know about before. The floats are approaching the stadium, 
Helcio Paim is directing everyone to the starting spot. Everyone has to be in exactly the right position. Tension is running high. It's precision work. Even a small mistake in maneuvering a float could cause it to get stuck or have parts fall off it. One dwarf has to play catch up after taking a spill off the fairy tale float. And on the space travel float, an astronaut is suddenly dangling in midair. This time, the Carnivalesco himself lends a hand. He's everywhere, monitoring the progress and pitching in wherever he can. He's under enormous pressure, and the tension is palpable. After all, Tijuca is defending its title. It's a point of honor, but there's also a lot of money at stake, too. The Pied Pipers are waiting for the starting whistle. It's the moment Ana Felipe Soromeno has been waiting for all year. This is the very best moment. I'm thrilled. I've seen so many lovely things, and now we're going to show them to everyone. I think we'll win again. The drummers are also confident of victory, and they're amused at their costumes. They're marching as the Bremen town musicians. Under Casa Grande's direction, the percussionists have won their category now for five years running. After 10 months of work, we're on the home stretch. Today, we show what we're made of. We'll put on a wonderful parade. We're ready. Just before midnight, nearly an hour late, they finally get underway. For Paro Barros, it's a magical moment. His vision is about to become reality. The fairy tale forest is one of the main attractions. With toadstools that hide small gnomes, dancing trees, and enormous mythical creatures. And a German legend that's known across Brazil, the VW Beetle, assembled right on the parade route. The ghost ship is a visual highlight. 170 ghosts recall Richard Wagner's opera, The Flying Dutchman. It's a fittingly spectacular tribute to the German composer, who's now doing his share on behalf of the celebration in Rio. For the samba dancer from Portugal, her dream of appearing in Rio's carnival is now a reality. The icing on the cake, the culinary section. Even chocolate bars are dancing tonight. And at the end, there's beer by the leader. After all, Germans who moved to Brazil have also made a name for themselves with breweries. The portrait of Germany is being broadcast around the world to about 160 nations. Casa Grande tells his troupe to strike up a beat, wearing the costumes of the Bremen street musicians. German specialties to a Brazilian beat. The Germany parade is a play of cliches and contrasts. Samba meets sauerkraut, a delicious treat at the world's largest carnival parade. But it's not entirely without incident. On the fairy tale float, one of the dwarfs has fainted. It's too hot inside her toadstool. The medics rush in to help, even as the float continues on its path. The show must go on. Every point counts in this tough competition. Most of the performers and the audience don't even notice. For the Carnivalesco, it's an emotional moment. Oh, 
We put on a parade that could win, that could make us the champions. Now we just have to wait for the results. It all depends on the jury's decision. Ash Wednesday, the moment of truth. The winner will be crowned under the heat of the sun at the San Bodromo. The ranking is complex, with ten categories each assessed by four jurors. Then, the points are totaled. The fans of all 12 Samba schools are nervous with anticipation. The category totals are announced one by one. Just a few tenths of a point can make all the difference. Nine point eight. Only a perfect ten really merits rejoicing. Three schools are still in contention. Then, a sensational moment. Unidos da Tijuca, 10. Casa Grande and his percussion troupe have catapulted Tijuca into the lead. The school needed us, and we were there. The school's in front because the percussion director and his crew gave it everything they had. We put our heart and soul into it. We're not just hired hands, samba functionaries. We're Unidos de Tijuca. That's why we're in front. He's the hero of the day. Whatever happens, whatever the outcome, we did our part. But the remaining categories don't fare quite as well. After two hours of nail-biting, the winner is decided. This year, the Villa Isabel Samba School can take home the carnival crown. Unidos de Tajuca is third. They're disappointed. But there's still a trophy. The president of the school goes up to receive it. The carnivalesco isn't here, though. Maybe he sensed that the school wouldn't pull off a victory. What remains are many happy memories of a fantastic voyage through a magical country. Alemania Encantada, German myths at the Rio Carnival. A fitting kickoff to Brazil's Year of Germany. Bravo!